Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jonathan and today we're going to be building a super cool VR app. It's a baseball app where you whack a ball in VR, you hit it, super easy to do, and it's going to have almost no lines of code. The only thing you'll need for this tutorial is an Oculus Quest 2 or an Oculus Quest 1, I think that'll work as well, and a Windows PC preferably. So if you like this content, please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and let's get into it. So the first step we're going to take is we are going to download Unity Hub. You can click either of these two links in Google. I'm just going to do get started with Unity and we're going to do download for Windows. And essentially you can download for Mac or Linux as well, but for VR you won't be able to test out your application in Unity if you have a Mac or Linux. So that's why I'm doing Windows plus I have a Windows computer. So once you extract and set up the Unity package on your desktop, you'll come to a page that looks something like this. It's a black page. This is the new Unity Hub, so it might look a little bit different if you're used to more previous versions, but this is essentially the newest version of Unity Hub. And you can see we have all these categories right here. We have learn, we have installs, we have projects. And basically what we're going to do is we're gonna click on this install editor right here and we're gonna install the latest version. Now I already have that installed, so I'm not going to do it. But when you get to this, you're gonna click Android build support because this is what you're gonna need for VR. And you're also gonna click uh, Windows build support because again, the, uh, the fun fact is that if you have a Mac or Linux, you won't be able to test it out. That's just how it is. You will be able to build an APK file, but you won't be able to test it directly through Unity. So once you get that all installed and it's all downloaded and ready to go, go up to your projects and let's start our new project. So if you click right here on new projects and you see right up here, we can actually change our editor version right here. So I'm gonna change mine to the most recent one because that's the one we just installed. And you can see we have all these new templates that come with the 2021 version. So this is new, 3D URP. I think 3D HDRP is new. Uh, 2D URP is new, and we even have a VR template, but we're not going to use it because it's just going to complicate things, and you'll see why in a minute. Our VR template is not really uh, compatible with the XR Toolkit template that we're going to be using, so it's just simpler to just do a basic 3D core. So select that, and then let's title our project. I'm going to title it My New VR Project. Kind of a, a boring name, I know, but... <laughs> That's what I'm gonna be doing. And I'm going to choose a file to save it in. And the file I'm going to choose is my first VR project. You can choose whatever you like. This is just what I'm doing. And let's click create. Okay, so now that we have our project set up and ready to go, let's make it VR ready and get the Oculus enabled to communicate with Unity. So to do that, we're gonna to go to edit. We're gonna to go to project settings. And what I like to do is I like to just drag this project settings tab right there so I have easy access to it. And what we're going to do is we're now going to go to XR plugin management right there at the bottom. And we're gonna click install. You can see up here that we now have these three tabs, right? We have Oculus, we have Unity Mock HMD, and then we have this OpenXR tab. We're gonna be using OpenXR. And most headsets today or most uh, games today are moving towards this OpenXR standard because essentially it's a framework that's developed where you can plug into many different headsets. So you uh, give an input for one headset such as Oculus and then that input can translate over a variety of platforms like Vive or you know many other types of headsets. So we're gonna be using this. You can also see we have three tabs up here. So we have one for our uh, computer, then we have uh, one for Android, right? Because we installed Windows and Android. And we'll be coming back to this Android tab in a bit, but right now we're just going to click on this OpenXR. Okay, so now you're gonna see we came to this notification and this is just a notice to basically disable the, uh, the old Unity Engine input system because we're gonna be using a new input system for our VR mod. So we're gonna click yes on that. Okay, so now we are all installed with OpenXR and we're ready to go, except we have this yellow warning symbol 
And all this is, is essentially it's, it's prompting us and saying that we need to add an interaction profile. And an interaction profile is essentially a headset or a platform. So to do this, we just click edit and it'll take us down to this tab right here under XR plugin called OpenXR. And we can just choose which interaction profiles we want. So as you can see, we have a lot of platforms we can choose from. We can do HTC Vive, we can do Valve Index, of course, we're going to be doing Oculus because that's what we're going to be working with primarily. We can do all of these if we want. We can do Microsoft Hand Interaction Profile and a whole bunch. Now, the other thing we want to do while we're in this OpenXR section is we want to change the render mode to multi-pass. Now, the difference between these two is that single pass will render the game in only one eye. So if we want to render it in both eyes, which is necessary for the Oculus, we have to do multi-pass. Now, multi-pass does require more processing power, but ultimately that's necessary for VR. Um, so once we're done with this, let's head over to the Android tab and let's do the same thing that we did for, um, for our uh, OpenXR, or for our Windows, sorry, to Android as well. And I already did this. Um, basically, uh, we want to install Oculus, and we don't want to do, we don't want to check off OpenXR for the Android tab because when you uh, render OpenXR in an Android Oculus build, for some reason it comes out weird in the Oculus headset. It comes out in a theater mode, and we want it to be in in VR, you know, interactive. So let's just click on Oculus. And now that that package is installed, we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did for our OpenXR. And we're going to just check to make sure all of these are set up and it looks like they are. So now we can officially communicate with the Oculus headset from our Unity game through OpenXR. We're all set up. And if you go down here to our assets folder, uh, or assets section, you can see we have this new folder called XR, and this is the free folders that we get with the OpenXR framework. So we have a settings folder with some settings, we have a loaders folder right over here, and that's all great, but now we need a way to interact in our VR environment, you know, picking things up, you know, pushing things around, and we get all of that for free with no code with a framework called XR Interaction Toolkit. And what we're gonna do to install it is we're first gonna go to our package manager. So let's open this window up right here and we'll click on the package manager. And this is essentially all of the packages that we have in Unity. And some of these are built in, some of these you download from the asset store or other places. And we can easily manage our own packages. Now, for the XR Interaction Toolkit, we're gonna do it in a kind of a special way. We're gonna do it by accessing the git URL. So click on this tab. Let's type in com.unity.xr.interaction.toolkit. And this should work and let's add it. And as you can see, we're installing the package now. So now you're gonna be prompted with this message. And this is essentially just saying that, you know, if you were using the XR Interaction Toolkit in, a, in this project before, well, now you're installing an updated version. So this can break your Unity game if you're not careful, right? Because the, the newer version of XR Interaction Toolkit has new things in it and it could bug out the old version. So this only really matters if you have an if, if you've used the previous version of XR Interaction Toolkit in your game or your app. Uh, we haven't. This is a new project, so I'm just going to go, I made a backup, go ahead. And now it is installed and ready to go. And there's these two samples right here, and what we're going to do is we're going to import the default uh, input actions right there. Okay, so now we're back in our game and I'm gonna show you what we just imported here and why it's important. So now if we go back to our assets down here, we see we have two new folders. We have the XR Interaction Toolkit folder, which is the XRI, and that's all of the code needed for the framework to work. And then we also have this samples folder right here. And if you go in here, we can go into XR Interaction Toolkit and we can see the, what we just installed, the default input actions. Now, these are essentially 
what we were talking about earlier, the default actions that you would use in VR. So grabbing, snapping, um, things like that. And these are super important and they make our life really easy. And I'll show you why later in this video. But for now, let's go to the, uh, the default input actions and click on expector. And we're just going to add all of these input actions. We're just gonna go through the list and add them. Okay, so once you have all of these added, then let's go back to our project settings and let's go down to our preset manager right here. And let's just go to this action-based controller and let's add right for the right controller and let's add left for the left controller. So for our first scene, it's gonna be a very simple scene. And it's not going to be too much. We're just going to get in the headset and we're going to start off by creating a 3D object. And that 3D object is going to be a plane, which will act as our floor that we can walk on. And let's uh, create a material for this plane just so it's not blank white. So create a new folder and title it materials. I think I spelled materials wrong. <laughs> Sorry about that. And let's go into our folder and we will create a new material and we'll call it floor mat. And let's go to the inspector for floor mat and we'll color it whatever color you want. I'm gonna color mine uh, green and I'm gonna drag it onto the floor so now I have a green floor. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna import our XR rig. So this is how we'll move around an XR. And all we do is we click on that, we go down to the XR tab, and you see we have two options here. We have XR origin and uh, action-based, and then we have just regular XR origin. Now XR origin is just gonna be the head, right? So if we just do XR origin by itself, it's just gonna be our head camera, that's it. We're, we're gonna have no movement. But what we want is XR origin action-based. Anything where there's movement, you want action-based. Locomotion systems, direct interactor, anything that needs action, always look for that. So we're gonna click on XR origin action-based. And you can see that along with our XR origin camera, uh, we also imported this XR interaction manager. And what we're gonna do here, this is very important, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to add component and we're gonna look for the script called Input Action Manager. And you see right here at this tab, we have all these action assets and we can add stuff to this list. So let's add what we just created, our, uh, our default action set. So let's go back to the samples folder right here and go to this XR default action inputs and just drag it right in there to the, uh, to the first element. And now all of the input actions that we just added just by clicking are now in our input action manager script. So let's go back to the XR origin just to show you what this entails. So we can see that there's a script attached to the XR origin and we see that the XR origin is where the camera is. So where typically the camera would be in this um, uh, right under here in the directional light. And if you just come with a standard 3D scene, when we import this XR Interaction Toolkit, it just comes packaged in to the XR origin, that, remember the head. So then if we drop down in this uh, camera offset, we can see we have the main camera right there. We have the left-hand controller, which comes with all of the interactions that we added. And again, if you don't see these interactions, then you, you probably didn't add them right. Just go back and add these and, and redo those couple steps to get these all in here. And that is about it. We are now all set to go with our VR application and we can actually jump into VR right now if we want and that's what we're gonna do. So grab your Oculus headset if you have it and let's do it. Okay, so make sure that your Oculus is attached to the computer via an Oculus link cable like this. And I can attach a link in the description down below to 
guide you to where you would buy an Oculus Link cable. If you're not sure, you just buy it from their website. But make sure you have one of these and attach it to your computer. And then also make sure that you're in desktop mode in the Oculus Quest. So make sure that you're looking at your desktop. When you're in that mode, pull Unity up. And now all you have to do, and this is really cool, is we can just press play right here in the debugger. And this will just pop us right into our VR scene. So now you see I'm in my VR scene and I have these laser pointers right here. You know, I'm moving them around. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. And this is essentially, you know, a functional VR Oculus app. I mean, we're not able to do a whole lot, but hey, it's, uh, it's still an app. Okay, so congrats. You just made your first app in VR, but we weren't able to do a whole lot. We just kind of moved our controllers around. But what if you want to grab something or, you know, hit a ball with a bat or, or do something like that, right? Well, that's super easy to set up as well, and we're going to do that. So we're just going to make this incredibly simple. We're going to create our ball, which is just a 3D sphere. We're going to bring this up like that, move it over here, and we're just going to scale this down a little bit so it's the size of, uh, you know, what a, what a baseball would be the size of more or less. We're gonna hold it right there, and that's gonna be our ball. Okay, so we have that, but before we go further with this scene, I wanna add something super important, and that is movement. I wanna get locomotion in here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our hierarchy right here, and we're gonna go back down to our XR tab, and we're gonna to go to locomotion system action based. Now remember, action based means controllers. Whenever you want to include your controllers in your scene, you have to look for action based. XR Origin, just the camera. Action based, controllers and the camera. So that's just an easy way to remember that. So let's click on locomotion system, action based. And here we have our locomotion system provided by the XR toolkit. And we can see that we have a teleportation provider and we also have a snap turn provider. So the snap turn will handle the turning and the teleportation will handle the teleportation. We click, we point, we teleport. That's how it works. So in order to enable this teleportation, we need one more thing. We need a teleportation anchor or a teleportation area. There's two options. Now the teleportation area is just a free for all teleportation. It's a, it's a plane that looks like this, looks just like the plane we created. And anywhere on this plane, you can teleport. It's a complete free system. A teleportation anchor, on the other hand, if we go back, is an anchored location. So it's that specific spot you can teleport to. And you can't teleport anywhere else in the scene. So that's the difference between those two. Now we're going to use the teleportation area for this demo. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this plane right here. And we're just going to add that to our floor. So we'll go to add component on our plane, on our green plane. And we will go to teleportation area. And we'll just add that in. And there we go. All right, so now let's get into our Oculus headset once again and test this out. All right, so now you can see that when I put my my controllers to the floor, they turn white, and that's because the Raycaster is picking up the floor, and it that means my teleportation system is working. And if I press this grip button right here, I teleport, and I can do it with both hands, and if I turn the joystick, that's the snap turn working. So now I can turn myself as well. Okay, so what if we want to do a different type of locomotion? Uh, well, we can, all right? We don't have to teleport, although this locomotion sometimes makes people sick. Uh, they complain about it, which is why a lot of people do teleport. But this one is called continuous move. So let's go to our locomotion system right over here, and we'll add a component called continuous move provider action-based. And we will also do continuous turn provider action-based as well. And these will essentially just be a continuous move, and you'll see what that means in a minute. 
All we have to do to get this set up is we just have to make sure that uh, we have one of these on each hand because if they're on both hands, then it's not going to really work. So let's make the continuous move provider on the left hand and let's make the continuous turn provider on the right hand. Now let's just disable the teleportation provider and the snap turn provider and we should be all good to go. So let's jump into VR and test this one out as well. Now we can see that we have this move functionality. So now I'm pressing this controller and I'm able to move forward using the joystick. And I'm also able to turn using the joystick as well. And unlike the snap turn, I can turn continuously just by holding down on the joystick. All right, so now for the final part of this, and that is to set up a baseball, a bat, and make those two things grabbable so you can grab them with the controllers. So this is really fun and it's also really easy. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna set up our, our bat here and we're just gonna make this really simple. We're just gonna make it a capsule. No, actually, scratch that. We're actually gonna make this a cylinder. Uh, let me just delete that and create a 3D cylinder object right there. Move it away from our ball, kind of move it up there maybe, and let's go to our scaler and let's just play with this a little bit. Now I like to do a lot of things just by hand, but you can use the, uh, the positions right here or the uh, just enter it manually if you want. Um, I, however, like to do things by hand. And we'll go to our scaler and we will scale this up and make this skinny. And just kind of scale it up like that. And make sure it's right next to our, our XR origin right there. And I don't know, that might be a little, a little big. But if it is, it shouldn't be an issue. And now what we'll do is we'll just rotate this about maybe 42 degrees on the z-axis. Bring it down a little bit, push it more towards our ball, and there you go. That's our bat. So now what we're going to do to make these uh, grabbable is we're going to do something really cool. We're going to add something called the XR Grab Interactable. And you see, as soon as we add it, we get a rigid body. And this rigid body is what allows us to interact with the object in a physical way. So, you know, it gives it physics, it gives it, you know, we can push on it, we can pull on it. We have this gravity right here, which we can check off. We have mass. This is all done via a rigid body. That's how Unity engages with, uh, with objects in a physical way. So if we dig into this grab interactable script, we could see that we have quite a few settings here. And most of these settings have to do with high performance uh, when we're moving the object. So for instance, we have right here movement type. And if we just hover over it, we can see what that means. It specifies how this object is moved when selected. You have a couple options here. You can uh, set the velocity of the rigid body, um, which is personally my favorite. I think that gives the best uh, movement uh, performance. Um, we also have uh, the f movement through fixed update, which is a, uh, a function similar to the update function. And that is moving kinematically. And then we also have, uh, you know, directly updating the p position or transform in each frame. So those are instantaneous, which is the last one, kinematic, which is, of course, moving through fixed update, and then velocity tracking. We're going to go with velocity tracking because it's the highest performing one. Then uh, we also have this option to smooth our position. And this just gives us, you know, uh, some more settings and how we can, you know, we can adjust how, how smooth the position is. We can also adjust velocity dampening, uh, which, is, which is very good. And then if we go back up here to collision detection, I always like to put it on continuous dynamic because, you know, this just means we're continually detecting for collision, which is very good when it comes to moving objects. So that is our sphere. Now let's do the same thing for our bat. So let's go to our cylinder. Let's add the XR grabbable interactable. 
and let's increase the mass on this bat in the rigid body so it has more weight when we hit our ball. And let's make this maybe about 150. We'll go, we'll go high. And let's do the same exact thing that we did for our ball. So we will set it to velocity tracking. We will do smooth position. And we will also do collision detection continuous dynamic. And that's it. That's all we have to do. So let's jump back into VR and see what happens. Okay, so now I, as you can see, I have my ball and my bat and they're kind of big, admittedly. You know, they're not really scaled to uh, the correct size here, but that's okay. Because if we go up to our ball and I click this button right here, you can see that now I'm grabbing it, right? I'm grabbing the ball. I'm able to even kind of throw the ball a little bit if I want. And I can also grab the bat as well. Now, I'm not grabbing the bat really in the right place. I'm kind of grabbing it in the center, right? And there actually is a way to fix this. So before we hit our ball with our bat, let's, let's grab the bat in the right location. I wanna grab it right at the end there. Okay, so I'm back in Unity and I wanna grab the bat in a certain area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create, uh, if you go down here into our XR Grab Interactable, you can see we have this slot right here called Attach Transform. And this is a specific location that we can grab the uh, object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an empty game object and we're gonna call it uh, grab point. And this is right under our cylinder, remember? And you can see that the only thing the object has is a transform, so this is, this is a location. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna move this down on its parent object, the cylinder or the bat. We're gonna move it down to exactly where we wanna grab it, right here at the end of the bat right there. Okay, so now let's go to our cylinder and let's go back down here into the script to this attached transform and let's just drag this grab point into that transform. And now we should be good. So let's jump back into VR and see if the this worked. All right, so now I'm back in our game. I'm gonna go over to our bat. I'm going to grab it. And as you can see, it is grabbed in the correct location. And it feels, well, it doesn't feel, it feels like a big bat, <laughs> but a bat nonetheless. And I can, uh, but the important thing is it's in the right location. So now let's test it out on our ball right here. And let's just, uh, let's grab our ball and let's uh, maybe toss it up in the air and try and hit it. And look, it goes flying. <laughs> and that is actually really fun, especially with a big oversized bat like this. I'm having a, that's actually pretty fun. And that's it for the tutorial, everybody. I hope you had a great time. I hope you had fun. And I hope you go on to build a lot of cool VR apps in the future. If you're interested in continuing your education in VR, please check out our website at xrbootcamp.com. We offer tons of great courses from beginner to master class. The next course that's being offered is our XR prototyping course. It starts on the 14th of March and runs to the 13th of May. So if you're interested in that, check it out. It teaches you how to build four prototypes and one MVP in, a, in kind of a rapid process. Also, please check out the Discord. It's a free resource online. Tons of experts hang out there and there's tons of uh, people to ask questions about whatever project you're developing. So if you need you know, help online or if you just wanna reach out to some people to talk about what you're doing, please check that Discord app. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.